Welcome into Outkick the Show, boys and girls. I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. I hope wherever across this great nation or this fantastic world you may be, you are having a good Wednesday. We certainly are having a great Wednesday here in the Outkick Mansion as I get ready to talk to you on Periscope and Facebook. I have to go again off the jump. I want to tell you the new book is dominating in a way that I never thought it would dominate. I'm a guy who expects really good things to happen. The book is doing even better than I would have anticipated. For VIPs, I still haven't received the thousands of copies of my book that I need to be able to ship them out to you so I don't have them physically at my house yet. As soon as I do, the thousands of you who have signed up to be Outkick VIPs or have signed up for autographed copies, I will be shipping them all out to you. Uh, Also... I am doing only a few signings because my schedule is so busy. Uh, I will be signing Wednesday, a week from today, in Nashville uh, at the main Barnes & Noble on West End Avenue if you are in Nashville, uh, the one right by Vanderbilt University, right there on West End. I'll be doing a Nashville area book signing. I expect it to be crowded and fun. I'll be talking. It should be uh, a really cool event. That's like my hometown event that's going to happen a week from today. Next weekend. That's next weekend, not this weekend. I'm going to be down at the beach. I'll be down at Rosemary Beach for the owner's weekend. I am doing an event at Rosemary Beach on Saturday at their bookstore right there on the town square. The Hidden Lantern, I believe it's called. And then on Sunday, I will be doing an event in Seaside at the Sundog Books. If you're familiar with Seaside, Florida at all, it's the bookstore right there on the square. Hidden Lantern and Sundog Books. Uh, I'll be doing two events there. And then I'll come back into town and I'm headed back out of town. Shortly thereafter, I'm going to be in England for a week doing uh, Outkick the Show uh, from there, which should be really cool for the Titans-Chargers game. So I'll be overseas for a week. And then when we come back, I think I'm going to do a big event in Nashville again. I'll be on the road maybe some. It's hard to get on the road a ton for the book with the radio and TV obligations. But obviously the book is blowing it up. It's still in the top 30 on Amazon. Thousands of copies selling. Uh, It's going to do gangbusters. I'm not sure whether we're officially going to be on the New York Times bestseller list because they have this weird kind of amalgam of, uh, uh, of algorithm. It's not just the most books sold. If it were the most books sold, we would unquestionably be one of the 10 best books in America for this week. But they take they, they do it in a really not, not accurate way. I don't know why you wouldn't just take the list, which everybody has, of the best-selling books for the week and put those in. Uh, so I'm not sure 100% whether we're going to be in there. I am 100% sure that we, were, we will have outsold many of the books that will be in the New York Times bestseller list. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to shake out. Amazon, we continue to dominate. A lot of you are going out to Barnes & Nobles and Books of Millions. Both of those stores have already acknowledged they did not take a big enough order of our book, that the demand far exceeded what they anticipated. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't written a book in a decade. So I think they're looking at my old book sales. They're not thinking about the growth of OutKick. They're not thinking about the demand that you guys are going to bring to bear. Um, I'm telling you that it is absolutely a massive amount of books that we are selling. Uh, So uh, the other thing on the New York Times bestseller list, I should say, I was told, hey, if you pay us $30,000, we will guarantee that you will show up on the New York Times bestseller list. And I said, no, I'm not going to pay you $30,000. There are all sorts of companies that game the system to try to take advantage of whether or not you get on that list. So what I just want you to know is it's not 100% accurate. We have already dominated any kind of reasonable expectations for what we could do. And we will be one of the 10 best-selling books in America for the week that our book comes out. So, yeah, look, I mean, everybody tries to game the system. I chose not to pay. They said if I paid them $30,000, they do it for lots of authors. They will game the system. They'll call around to all the bookstores that are a part of the New York Times. And they will buy books from those particular bookstores and guarantee that you get on the list. And I said, I'm not going to pay you $30,000 to game the system. I'm just going to go out and fucking sell a ton of books without gaming the system by just telling my audience, hey, it's $17 on Amazon. It should be at every Books A Million and Barnes & Noble in the country. And so I want you guys to go out and actually uh, spend the money, buy the book, 
Hopefully give me feedback. The most important thing you can do, honestly, after the first week, I can sell tens of thousands of copies in the first couple of weeks. But after that, it's all going to be word of mouth. It's going to be you guys saying, hey, this book is good. Go read it. Giving it to your buddies during the holidays, through Christmas, through Thanksgiving, everything else, passing it along to your family members, giving it to your dad, giving it to your mom, giving it to your younger brother or sister. That's what actually fuels this, this magnitude. I, you know, He's never on the list. This is another good example of the New York Times bestseller list not being accurate. Jordan Peterson's book. Sold has sold over 2 million copies. He isn't eligible to be on the New York Times bestseller list because he has a Canadian publisher. He would be at the top of the list every week. The dude has sold over 2 million copies of his book, which is an un, un, unfathomable number uh, for a book to sell. And he would be number one on that, uh, that list for months at a time, for a year at a time. But it's a Canadian book. So he's not on there, Jordan Peterson. So uh, that book, I mean, I would be happy to sell a fraction of $2 million. If you told me right now, hey, you're going to sell 250,000 copies, I would do a cartwheel. If we did one-tenth of $2 million, I would be ecstatic. But we're going to be in the tens of thousands. It's going to be insanely successful off of my telling you guys to buy it. But what makes a book take off like that is when you guys get out, out, out and the word of mouth starts to take flight. That's something you can't artificially manufacture. That's something you can't create out of nowhere. Uh, I'm telling you right now, make sure that you go read the book. And if you like it, more importantly, share it. Also, don't be afraid to go write a review up on Amazon. It's funny. I, I don't know how this is. I provoke so many people out there by telling the truth and being honest. That the moment my book went live, four people went on the site uh, for the book reviews and immediately gave me one star, even though they hadn't read the book, because they're so triggered. Think about what it's like to have so many people triggered by what you say all day long, that the minute my book goes live, there are people who will go give me a one-star review. You can go look at it right now. Literally, the minute my book went live, a bunch of different people went on there and gave me a one-star review who hadn't read it at all, because I live in their brain. And their tiny little pea brains, it's always there thinking, Clay Travis, Clay Travis, Clay Travis. So it's funny, you go look at the reviews, I've got all five stars and then one stars from people who didn't read the book at all to start. It's amazing. And I, I don't know how I became so controversial or polarizing by just telling the truth. I think it's a reflection of our modern day society that the truth has become so rare that you can be controversial by just speaking the truth. It's an amazing situation that we have, uh, that we have entered into. And by the way, I finally have copies of the book. I forgot. I was going to hold it up for you. I totally forgot. I've got it sitting right here beside me. Here is the book. My publisher finally got me books. They just arrived at my door uh, one day after many of you got the, uh, the books before I did. Here is the cover. This is real. This is 100% uh, real. The back, and obviously it's not flipped. The back, it says, praise for Clay Travis. And then it's all the negative things that people have said about me in the past year. This book is out. It is $17 on Amazon right now. Barnes & Noble and Books A Million have both had to go back and redo uh, their orders. There's a little sticker right here, if you haven't seen it, where it says, banned from CNN and ESPN. Fox News has an article up, a story up about me today. CNN declined comment on banning me uh, in the wake of allowing Michael Avenatti to go on and say that, uh, that Brett Kavanaugh is a gang rapist, that he's been running trains on women. In the wake of Brett, uh, what's her name? Brit, uh, what's, what's the woman's name uh, that, that, that told me that B.O.O. Uh, Brooke Baldwin? In the wake of Brooke Baldwin's comments about Donald Trump's penis and everything else, I think you can see that CNN is full of crap. But I do thank CNN immensely because the minute that I went on last year, publishers came running at me, agents came running at me, book uh, people came running at me saying, please write a book. And now it is a best-selling book in America. This wouldn't have happened unless Brooke Baldwin had told me B-O-O-B-S that that was unacceptable to say on a television. So I'd like to thank her for helping to make this a bestseller. And in fact, she blurbed it. I don't know if you can see this. Brooke Baldwin. Uh, why would you even say that? Live on national television and with a female host. Why would you even go there? I'd like to thank Brooke Baldwin for blurbing the book. So the book is out. It is everywhere. Barnes & Noble and Books A Million are having to order a lot more in the physical uh, bookstores. 
Uh, this is an incredible cover at a minimum. Go buy it for your friends, your family, and uh, let's send a message. Also in the back cover, I, I, I honestly, I don't know how you can read this book and keep your pants on if you are a man or a woman. And, I mean, you just got to look at this photo. Tell me that everybody's pants don't immediately come off when they see this sexy photo of me. Oh, looking ever so casual. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, so uh, that is all what's going on. The book I now have a copy of, I would encourage you guys to go uh, check it out. Uh, and you get a great picture of me in the back cover. Uh, so I thank all of you for my book, Dominating. I want to say uh, my friends at Sportsbook Review, it's gambling season. It's football gambling season. My college football picks are up. I'll give you those in a moment. But it's gambling season. And the best place to make sure you get the best numbers, sportsbookreview.com. Go to sportsbookreview.com. You can look at every sportsbook. There is a substantial difference oftentimes between a half point and not a half point. We've lost a couple of bets this year. We're at 60%. Hate to brag, but we're at 60% so far on the year. And we've lost a couple of books just based on the hook. So where you get the number and whether you get the best number often makes a big difference. Um, and so uh, there, is, uh, there is a lot to be gained from that. All right? So, uh, so let's talk about that. The Clemson quarterback transfer. Okay, we got a lot to get to. Also, my guy Ryan Kelly, go to the home loan expert. Make sure that you decide to make the smart financial decision. Wipe out all your credit card debt. Wipe out all of your student loans and get a great rate on your home. Take advantage of the rise in home equity by replacing good debt, which is tax deductible, on your mortgage with bad debt, which is just hanging over your head at 20 plus percent interest. You'll be glad that you did it if you go to thehomeloanexpert.com. And if you do that right now, I am sending everybody who closes and says Clay Travis or Outkick sent me to the Home Loan Expert a brand new autographed copy of my book, plus you become a VIP member. All right, big news today. Uh, big news today that we uh, now have know is that Kelly Bryant, the uh, starting quarterback for the last 18 games for, uh, for Clemson, is going to transfer before they play the fifth game and try to take advantage of having an extra year of eligibility remaining. This is the, uh, the downside, I would say, of a new uh, transfer rule being implemented, which allows you to transfer after four games without any penalty. So my thoughts on this in general. Um, I don't blame Kelly Bryant if he thinks he's going to be benched for Trevor Lawrence and not win back the job once Trevor Lawrence has won the job. I don't blame him for deciding to transfer. I do think this is a little bit of an unintended consequence of the rule, which is allowing guys to play four games of the season and then just bail on their team and be eligible to play next year for a brand new team. I think that's a little bit strange, but Kelly Bryant, to his credit, has already graduated from Clemson. He feels like he deserves the right to start. He doesn't want to sit and extinguish the rest of his eligibility sitting behind Trevor Lawrence. He's already been on a team that won a national championship. So I don't know where Kelly Bryant will go. I would imagine that there will be a lot of schools interested in pursuing him. And I also think this. Psychologically, if you think you're a good quarterback and you get beaten out by a guy who may be a great quarterback in Trevor Lawrence, the expectation seems to be really high for uh, Trevor Lawrence. It's got to feel good to have your phone blow up with all these other new coaches and people out there deciding to try to recruit you to come play for a year at their program. Now, graduate transfers in general, this is one of the great topics that doesn't get a lot of discussion. How many great graduate transfers have there actually been? Russell Wilson went to Wisconsin and was insanely successful, took them to the Rose Bowl when he left NC State because Mike Glennon was behind him. Jake Ruddock, Rudock, I mean, that's pretty low on the list. Other than Russell Wilson, almost all of these guys are incredibly hyped, and then the actual result ends up not being that substantial. Now, maybe Joe Burrow down at, uh, down at LSU is going to be a difference maker. Most of the time, in 90% of the time that I have seen, graduate transfers have not actually panned out in a way that you would anticipate. There's a lot more talk about them than there is actual results. The best example of this, remember Jeremiah Masoli who transferred to Ole Miss and everybody was like, oh my God, this guy's going to be unbelievable. And then he didn't pan out at all. And look, there's a difference between a guy transferring and a guy being a grad transfer. If you transfer 
and you sit out for a couple of years, there's a lot of examples of guys that made a lot of sense. Troy Aikman transferred from Oklahoma to UCLA and was infinitely more successful. But almost all the time, the grad school quarterback transfer is not actually that good. In other words, you don't win a conference championship. You don't make the team to take the team to a different level. The only guy that I can really think of so far is, again, uh, Malik Zaire is another good example. Everybody's like, oh, Florida got Malik Zaire, and then he wasn't any good. Uh, the only guy I can really think of is Russell Wilson. Almost all the time, grad transfer doesn't pan out. Now, there's guys who get kicked out of school, Cam Newton style, go off to Blinn, I think it was, junior college, then come back to Auburn. That's different. There are guys that have panned out and been successful that way. But grad transfer, I'm going somewhere for only one year. Uh, there's not a lot of great success stories there. Guys, look, if you go for two years or more, I think it's a little bit different, which is why I said from the get-go, if I were Jalen Hurts, I would have made that move. Now, this is worth discussing. I don't know how Nick Saban did it, but the conversation for the entire offseason in college football was focused on who would start between Tua Tagovailoa and Jalen Hurts. And Tua is unquestionably better. There was much less talk about Kelly Bryant versus Trevor Lawrence. And then guess what happened? Clemson ends up being the school with the guy who transfers. If Nick Saban plays Jalen Hurts in week five against this awful, uh, who are they playing, like Louisiana Monroe or whoever it is that they're favored by 49 points, if that happens, it's amazing the storyline of how this worked out because all of the media attention focused on Alabama and how they were going to handle their quarterback situation, and then the ultimate impact ends up being Clemson. Here's where I think it could be really significant. If Clemson has a quarterback injury, if somebody gets hurt on Clemson's team, and then as a result, you have to go with a redshirt freshman backup, I think it's Chase Rice or something like that, uh, then Clemson goes from a team that you expect to play for the national championship in the college football playoff to a team that might not even win the ACC. So what Nick Saban has managed to do is Nick Saban has preserved the best quarterback he's ever had, Tua Tagovailoa, who is the equivalent, I've said, of Kevin Durant joining the Warriors, a cheat code for Nick Saban, while at the same time preserving a great backup in the event that Tua gets hurt or for some reason is not able to finish the season. I, I just think this is a big story. We're going to talk about it on Let It Rot, Let It Lock It In. Sorry, lock it in. My show on FS1, which will actually air on FS2 today because we're preempted by golf today and tomorrow. So that is going to take place on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. We'll be on FS2. I think it's an incredible move by Nick Saban. I think it's a Jedi master trick. Now, I don't think Dabo Sweeney did anything wrong because I think this actually helps him somewhat in the overall locker room. Because he can say, look guys, I could have let Kelly Bryant start week five and then made the decision to replace him later in the season where his career would have been over. If you really break this down, this is actually Dabo being a really good guy. And I believe it helps him on the recruiting trail because he can point to this and say, look, guys, I understand I want to win as bad as you, as bad as you guys do. But if it's not the best option for you to play for Clemson, I'm not going to hold you hostage. So I actually think this is a pretty good position for uh, Dabo Sweeney to be in. Uh, and I think it's a situation that is going to happen more and more with the quarterback position where you have guys like uh, like Jacob, uh, uh, like uh, Jake Fromm, and then you've got Fields who's coming in who looks amazing and is supposed to be great. I don't think guys are going to sit around very long. We already saw this with Georgia, with uh, Jacob Eason. I bet if the four-game transfer rule had been in effect, Jacob Eason would have tra transferred last year during the season and tried to get eligible as quickly as he could instead of transferring and sitting out for a year. So all of that, I think these are stories that are worth paying attention to. Let me give you the gambling picks. Let me give you the gambling picks. And by the way, I don't have a problem with the players making the decision to do this. Everybody has to look out for themselves. And I know there's some people who are like, oh my God, I can't believe he quit on his team. If you believe you're a starting quarterback, and you're not going to get to be a starting quarterback, and somebody else will give you that opportunity next year, I don't blame you at all for taking advantage of that opportunity. I would do the same. I would tell my son to do the same. You use the rules as they best benefit you. I don't blame anybody, Kelly Bryant or anyone else, for making that decision. All right, here are the gambling picks. 
So far, I have given you out 50 gambling picks on OutKick. 30 of them have been winners. 20 of them have been losers. That means right now we are winning at a 60% rate on the gambling picks. Absolutely phenomenal performance by me. Not the kind of guy to brag or draw attention to himself. The OutKick VIPs get an autographed copy of this book and they are getting the gambling picks on Monday. They pay $99. They get an autographed copy of this book which retails, what's the price on this? Which retails for $27 and then I have to spend several dollars to get it shipped out to you plus the autograph. That's a $50 value we're selling autographed copies for right now by themselves and you get the gambling picks early so you get the best possible number. VIPs are going to get the book when I get thousands of them delivered to my house and can actually sign them. I've got to get a lot of picks that are a lot of books that are coming from the publisher to me uh, because we've got thousands of VIPs now. Everybody who's a VIP gets a, gets a book. As soon as the books arrive here I will start signing them and sending them out. Uh, which is why, by the way, we would have sold even more copies on Amazon and everywhere else if I were actually out there uh, fighting the battles in the fields uh, and trying to sell to everybody else the thousands of people who are waiting I'm trying to get them as soon to you as I can Memphis at Tulane Memphis minus 13 and a half I waited all week for this number to drop below 14 it's now under 14 if you go to Sportsbook Review at a lot of different books across the country I think Tulane coming off of a really tough uh, situation Tulane coming off of a bad beat uh, on the road against Ohio State playing on a short week I think that Memphis is going to have a real advantage here traveling down to New Orleans I like Memphis minus 13 and a half Pitt at Central Florida Pittsburgh on the road they've been an enigma all, ye- all season nobody has any idea what's going to happen with Pitt going up against the inexorable machine that is Central Florida minus 13 and a half I like Central Florida and I also like the over in this game Pitt gave up 38 points last week to UNC. They're going to easily give up 40 to uh, to uh, Central Florida. Central Florida so far has scored 56 and 56 against FBS competition. They continue to roll. Syracuse at Clemson. I like Syracuse and I like the over here. Last year Syracuse and Eric Dungy beat Clemson head to head in the Dome up in uh, Syracuse, New York. Syracuse right now is 4-0. They are 4-0 against the spread. They are going to score points. They are going to score a lot of points. I think Trevor Lawrence will come out a little bit nervous. It's different to be a starter at his age. And I think both teams will eventually end up scoring a lot of points. I like the over here and I like Syracuse. Uh, Ohio State at Penn State. I'm going up to Happy Valley. I'm going to be watching this game in Happy Valley in person. My guy James Franklin, he killed us last week on the Penn State-Illinois game. I think Ohio State is going to beat Penn State outright on Saturday in Happy Valley. It's going to be a whiteout. I will be in there in the crowd. It will be an awesome experience. I can't wait to be there. Somebody, by the way, just said Syracuse was a push last week. No, it wasn't. Not if you got the best number. If you waited until Saturday to bet, you got a push. That line opened at 27.5 and and stayed at 27.5 for multiple days before it finally started to tick up slowly Get the best number. Don't sit around and wait. So I'm trying to tell you. Don't be dumb. Don't sit around and wait on the number. You got to pounce. Can't wait till Saturday morning to place your bets. You got to get on these numbers before they move. Everybody who was smart was on it and got the win. You didn't if you took them at 30 or whatever the final number was. You got it by several different numbers. Get. I say it all the time. Get the right number. Why would you not go to Sportsbook Review and not take your worst number? Open up multiple accounts if you need to and get the best number all the time. This is stupid to me that you wouldn't do that. I mean, honestly, if what I try to always do is take the consensus number. So I'll look at Sportsbook Review. I'll look across at 10 different books and I will take the number that is most common. Not the best number, the most common number. And so I don't understand why everybody doesn't do that. You would shop around. You wouldn't go into a store and pay more just because you happen to be in that store. You would open another account. Like It doesn't make any sense to me. Get the best number. Uh, so I am on Penn State. I will be there in person. It should be a lot of fun. My wife and I are traveling up to Happy Valley. Should be very cool. Uh, I, I was t- tempted to take the over, but it's all the way up to 70 now. 
And that's just a really high number, I think, for what's likely to be a really competitive top 10 matchup. Uh, okay, South Carolina, Kentucky. I'm on the Wildcats. I gave them out at a pick em. Kentucky is now a one and a half or a two point favorite in this game. And I'm on the under. I gave it out at 51. It's now ticked down to 49 and a half. Past two years, these teams played. Kentucky won 23 13 and 17 10. Kentucky has won four straight in this series. I don't understand why in the world this was ever a pick em. I don't understand why at home Kentucky has not been favored by at least a field goal. And maybe it's going to end up Kentucky a field goal favorite. But we've already got it banked on a pick em if you're a VIP. And I think the under is going to happen. Last two years, this game has gone 36 and 27. And the number is still sitting at 49 and a half. Both these teams, mirror images of each other, physical, try to control the line of scrimmage, try to run the football. And uh, I love Benny Snell Jr. I think ultimately Kentucky has more talent there. I think Kentucky finds a way to win. That, my friends, is the blood bank guarantee, a double blood bank guarantee in Lexington, Kentucky. Tap the veins. Get rich, kids. Florida, plus 7.5 against Mississippi State. Here's why I like this one so much. I love when you can bet on a former coach going back up against all the players that he, that he recruited and all the players that he has game planned for for years. Because nobody knows the strength and weaknesses better of Mississippi State's offense and defense than Dan Mullen because he's watched them on tape for years. I love everything about Florida getting over a touchdown on the road. You know how badly Dan Mullen wants to go back into Starkville and make everybody else jealous. This is like when the hot girl gets dumped and then she shows up at the next party and she's lost like 10 pounds and she's wearing her best dress and she's wearing her best draw bra and she's got the best high heels on. She is going to look phenomenal when everybody else sees her because she wants everybody else to think, what in the world were those idiots thinking when they, what was that loser thinking when he decided to break up with her? Dan Mullen wants to go back into town and sashay around and make everybody in Starkville think, damn, Dan Mullen is fine as hell. What were we ever thinking letting him leave and getting in Joe Moorhead? Conversely, Joe Moorhead's got a lot of pressure on him now. You lose to Kentucky and then you lose to Dan Mullen, all the bloom is off the Joe Moorhead rose. Nobody's running around saying, oh, we got a better deal now. We're a better team. You got your ass kicked last week by Kentucky. That wasn't fancy, 28-7. Nobody circles the wagons like Dan Mullen going back to Starkville. This is his only opportunity to go back to Starkville too, remember, because this will only happen once every 12 years. So this is his only opportunity to go back and show everybody how much better he is. Stanford at Notre Dame. I'm on the under and I'm on Stanford. Stanford has won four of the past five games. They've only lost in that sequence, came by three points at Notre Dame. For the life of me, I don't understand why Stanford is not a pick em here. I think this is, line is completely wrong. Plus five and a half now. I love the under here and uh, I am on it. And finally, 13-0, and the 13th pick. Uh, I'm telling you right now, Ole Miss at LSU over 58 was what I gave out. It's now at 59 and a half. I think this game is going to look a lot like the game at LSU between uh, Ole Miss and LSU, uh, between, sorry, uh, Louisiana Tech and LSU. LSU puts up between 38 and 45 points. Ole Miss puts up between 24 and 28. The over cashes with ease. I'm telling you right now, this is a great play. I appreciate all of you giving you that. Finally, Last time again, for those of you who might have come in late, here's my book. Go buy it. It's in every bookstore in America. It's at Amazon. My name is Clay Travis. This is Outkick the Show. This is going to be a best-selling book. It already is a best-selling book. And I got to tell you about Brett Kavanaugh. We got yet another fake news allegation against Brett Kavanaugh. I am so ready to watch his testimony tomorrow. I am so ready for the Senate Judiciary Committee to vote to confirm him on Friday. And I am so ready for the full Senate to also vote to confirm him. This is one of the most ludicrous attacks that I have ever seen in the history of my political life. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh has been accused of, all which he denies by the way, drunkenly trying to make out with a girl, drunkenly pulling his penis out of his pants in a, in a house, in a room party, and now, this is the most ridiculous allegation of all, now trying to put alcohol into a mixed drink like bucket to make everybody drunk. I, this, this allegation makes no sense to me. 
anybody who has ever been to a college party or a high school party where there is a big bucket or garbage can full of hooch or whatever you want to call it, if you pour Everclear in something, the goal if you drink something that has Everclear in it, your goal is to get drunk. I, do none of these people ever have been to a party in their life? I don't even understand this allegation. I have thrown house parties where I put liquor in a punch bowl with the goal of getting everybody drunk. I am throwing a Halloween party. Full, I'm, I, maybe I need to testify in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee. I am throwing a Halloween party at my house. At that Halloween party, I will put a lot of liquor in the mixed drinks to give to people in an effort to get everybody drunk. Because I want everybody to have a really good time and also because I trust my guests to understand that if you take a drink with liquor in it, the goal is to allow you to imbibe the liquor so that you start to become a little bit buzzed. All right? I don't understand how this is an allegation and an affidavit. He didn't even do anything. He just made a mixed drink. Has nobody ever been to a college house party before? Has nobody ever been to a fraternity party or a sorority party for that matter in their entire lives? The alcohol is there so that people can drink it and get drunk and have a better time than they would have if they were sober. That is the entire reason for the existence of alcohol. Particularly in a party setting. Because if you drink it and you drink enough of it, you get drunk and you have a better time in theory than you might have if you were sober. That is why the alcohol industry exists. That is why brewers exist. I, I, I just, I am baffled by it beyond a stretch of the imagination. And then he is accused of running trains on people. This whole story makes no sense. This whole story makes no sense on any level. He's denied it all, but even the stuff that's being said, he didn't do. You haven't even alleged anything that he did is criminal. This is crazy. This charade needs to end and Brett Kavanaugh needs to be confirmed whether you are a Democrat or whether you are a Republican. If anything, I halfway expect for Donald Trump to drop him because the guy admitted he didn't have sex in high school or for several years after. The fact that he kept a calendar from 1982 is one of the biggest loser moves I've ever seen. Who keeps their calendar from 1982? By the way, how about the fact that it ends up being issued into evidence? The fact that he had his high school calendar from 1982. If you kept your high school calendar from 1982, I don't even need to question whether you ever had sex while you were in high school. The answer is no. And you probably didn't have sex while you were in college. If anybody is a grown adult and they keep their high school calendar from 1982, you are definitely not slaying a lot of puss out on the high school streets. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, anyway, I love all of you, especially if you go to an all-boys school, for God's sakes. I love all of you. My name is Clay Travis. Go buy my book, Republicans Buy Sneakers 2. And uh, look at that, Donald Trump ducking on, Don uh, ducking on Colin Kaepernick, banned from CNN and ESPN, the greatest blurbs you will read anywhere. It's in every book in a bookstore in America, should be unless they're sold out. Go buy it at Amazon, $17. You can also hear me read it, nine hours unabridged if you buy the book. I love all of you. My name is Clay Travis. This has been Outkick the Show. Kisses to everybody. Thank you so much for supporting the book. And uh, I will see you guys on Lock, Lock It In in about uh, an hour and also on Let It Ride. Uh, uh, sorry, on Lock It In. Also on my show tomorrow. Anyway, I got a lot going on. This has been Outkick the Show. I'm Clay Travis.